Welcome to part two of the Google Enhanced Search app. In part one, let's go back to the class page. You can see we're using a web viewer. We're going to create a Google Search app. In part one, we actually built this out. We designed it. And then we coded a couple blocks. You can see this is on the previous page. Day one, I gave you these codes. Here's my actual app that we did in video one. In part two, we need to code this block. When someone types something inside of our text box and they click on search, we want to update that to search for Google. Also, if someone clicks on BTN search, we're using the speech recognizer. We're going to listen to whatever the person says. So if they say monkey, then we're going to search for monkey using the Google search. So let's get begin by finishing our coding. This is going to be a video primarily on coding, and it's a little bit tricky. So the first part of this, in order to update this with whatever they type inside of here, we have to understand how Google Search works. So this is Google Search, and you can see, let's look at the URL. It's https colon google.com, then you see it has hashtag q equals to safe equals to strict, and q equals to equals to Gantech. Depending on your network, I'm at Dade Schools right now in Miami-Dade County. This is extra stuff that Miami-Dade County adds in on their network. This, you can see I push enter, is the basis of all Google searches. This part, https colon slash slash google.com hashtag q equals to Q stands for query, which means a search, equals to does not change. No matter what I search for, it does not change. This part is what they type in the text box. So to really understand and to code our search app, we have to understand how Google search works. This part does not change. Saying Q means query, search Google, for what I typed in, what I typed in was Gantech. I can change it here and say Obama. Oops, Obama. And you can see Date Schools puts this stuff back in, but again, this is really, I'm going to delete that. And you can see it gives me the Obama stuff. I also can change it up here. If I change this to back to Gantech. Up here, you could see this part is always going to be the same. This part we're going to grab from what the user types in. Now there's a difference. Let's type in Jamie Gant. Let's get rid of that extra stuff that Date Schools is adding in. It's just hashtag Q equals to whatever they search for. So down here, I have Jamie Gant with a space. But if you look at the URL, it has a plus. The internet does not like spaces. But if you think about it, Jamie plus Gant is my name, so it's Jamie plus Gant. So we also have to figure out a way to replace these spaces with pluses. All right, so let's try to figure this out. This first part, in our app, what happens, the events that happen? someone clicks this box the keyboard is going to pop up then they're going to type what they want to search for then they're going to push this box there's a couple different events they're going to click the box to type something to search then they'll type whatever they're searching for then they're going to click the button um, btn search to search for that item the main event though is when they touch the search icon the reason it's the main event, when they click here and the, the keyboard pops up, they might make a mistake. They could type animals when they wanted to type animal zoo. So we don't want to automatically start searching when this happens. We actually want to search whenever they push the search button. So let's go to blocks. And these were from the previous. We're going to collapse these. Remember, I left them empty because I wanted you to figure that part out. You should know how to do that. So these are my completed blocks so far. And now I want to program my main event. 
my main event is when they touch button search, I need to search for whatever they typed in. So I'll come to BTN search when they touch this. What do I want to do? I have to again figure this out. I want to create this URL so I can go to it, but the URL is made of two parts. So let's just try to do the URL first. I'm going to update my web viewer. So I'm going to go web viewer, go to URL. Now it's giving me one thing to put in, but really I need to put in two. I need to put in this first part. And then I need to put in the second part, which is what they actually typed in, in that text box. To do that, it's two text. I need to join some text. So we can come over to text, pull in my join part there. And here, I want that first one to be what this is. It does not change. So I'm actually going to copy this. I want to put that in the first part of it. So I'm going to use text. I'm going to put in my empty text box. I'll paste that in because no matter what, Google search always has this part. Google.com has Q equals to. The second part, if we look at the URL, this comes exactly from the text box. Well, we have a text box. We simply have to get the text of the user. So the text box we have is TXB search. That's this text box. What they type in here is stored inside of this property text. So remember, all of these properties for any component you can access through the green blocks. I'm going to come to blocks. Let's go to TXB search. You can see the events, the actions, and procedures. But if I scroll down, these are the properties. And I have two text. You can see there's a difference there. They're green, all the properties are green. But this is a light green and there's a darker green. The light green is if I want to get whatever the current value is. The dark green is if I want to change the current value to something else. In this instance, if we look back over here, I want to get whatever they typed inside of here. So which one do you think I should use? I want to get the text from the text box. That's what text.txb search is getting the text from the search. This now would create this URL. The only problem is I need to change. Here I'm typing spaces, but the URL needs to have pluses. So we need to find a way to modify that. In order to modify it, what we're going to do, we're going to go back to text. Text is very multi functional. You can see it has a bunch of blocks inside of here. You'll use a lot of them throughout the year. We want to replace all spaces with a plus sign. So we're going to scroll down and you can see right here there's a block called replace all text. I'm going to put this inside of here. You can see the text that I want to uh, replace. I'm going to put that in the top. Now I need to tell me what I'm looking for and what is the replacement. I'm going to fill those in with two text boxes. The segment, what I want to replace, again, if we look back over here, is spaces. So I'm simply going to click in here and put a space. So you can see there's a space there. Even though it looks empty, you can see there's a space. I'm going to replace all spaces with a plus sign. So if we look at this code block really simply and easy, when someone touches BTN search, we're going to go to the web viewer. We're going to make the URL http google.com slash hashtag Q equals to whatever they typed in. But we're going to replace all spaces with pluses, which would give us this URL. Very, very simple to do. The other part of it, we want it to speak. Remember, this is enhanced, so I'm going to do text-to-speech. I'm going to pull out my speak. And we want to text 
tell the user, here are your results for whatever they typed. So I'm going to use another join statement. I can speak, but I need to actually have this part, what they typed in, and I also want to say, here are your results for. So I'm going to go back to text. I'm going to use my join. I'm going to put text here to put in at top. The first part I want the app to say is, here are your results for. The second part is, what did they type in? Did they type in monkey, zoo, giraffe? The second part is, whatever they typed in the text. I'm going to click on TXP search. I'm going to go back down to my text property here. I'm going to pull that in. And what this says is, I'm going to speak, here are your results for whatever they typed in. If they typed in monkey, it would say, here are your results for monkey. And the web viewer would also update to the monkey website, which would show, it would really show this. You would see this Google search results because we're using Google to search. Now, there's one caveat. This does work. But if I click this and the text box is empty, you should not search for anything. You should actually send an alert to the screen. So what we want to do, I'm going to introduce you to a new component called a notifier. You can see the notifier is right here. This is a way to send simple alerts or error messages, or even send a dialog box where you can choose options. So I'm going to drag alert notifier inside of here. You can see it's a non-visible component, which means we can't see it on the screen, but we can program with it when we're coding. So when we come back to block, what we need to handle is if this box is empty, send an alert, or else if it's not empty, we want to update this. Right now we're updating it regardless if it's empty or not. So I'm going to pull this out for a second. <coughs> now we're going to introduce you to conditionals. The way computers, apps, technology has kind of an artificial intelligence is using conditional statements. If this one thing, then do that. Or else, if something else, do something else. In real life, we do it naturally. If you walk to the door and the door is locked, you knock on the door. If no one answers the door, you leave. So that's an example. Or you might call the person and say, hey, are you home? So we do it naturally. You walk to the door, you might try to pull the door open. If the door is locked, then you knock on the door. If no one answers the door, then you call the person on the phone. That's what we do. In computers, it does the exact same thing. In App Inventor, you find the if statement in underneath control. And if you scroll to the very top, you can see if here. What we want to say in English is if this text box is empty. So I know I need to go TXB search. I need to pull this down. This gets me whatever is in that text box, the text from the text box. This will not fit in here because it's text. If needs to be a condition, something that's true or false. So what I said in English is, is this text box empty? This is simply text. This is simply text, so I can come over the text and see if I can find something that helps me locate if it's empty. Remember, text has a bunch of different things. And you can see right here, it has, is it empty? I can put this inside of my if condition, if this text box is empty. What do I want to do? I want to send an alert to the screen. Just like I said it in English, if you look at this block, if this text box is empty. This says if this text box is empty. So in App Inventor, it's very um, congruent with what you say in English. You just have to know how to plug the box together. If it's empty, we want to send a notification to the screen to say, text box is empty, please type an animal to search for. 
So I'm going to come to my notifier. I'm going to scroll down. They have a bunch of different um, alert sheets you can use. We're going to use the simple one, show alert. And the notification I want to send is going to be text. And I want to say, please type. I can actually could say search is empty. Please type. What do you want to search for? I'm gonna move this out of the way for a second. So if the text box is empty, I'm going to show an alert call search is empty. I'm going to show an alert that says search is empty, please type what you want to search for. I also, our app talks, so we can do the exact same thing. So I'm going to do text to speech. I'll put that inside of there as well. And I might say a different message. I could do the same one. Empty, please try again. So I can have an alert that shows one thing and text to speech say something different. So this handles if the text box is empty. If this is empty when they touch that, it's going to show that notifier. It's also going to say, hey, the search is empty. Please try again. The, the other thing, if it's not empty, then we need to update the web viewer. So if it's not empty, it's if this or else, that means it's not empty. I can pull in this else block and connect it there. So either it's empty or it's not. If it's not empty, we already handled that part of it. I can fill that inside of here. So that's the completed block for when someone types and types something in our text box and also they click on the search button. Now, we need to do the search by voice. For that, it's going to be a little bit similar but it's going to be a little bit more tricky so when someone touches this button what there's a couple of events that happen we have to launch speech recognizer so you push the button it's going to launch speech recognizer it's going to listen for you after it gets what you say then we can code with it so before you actually go into that I'm going to pause and I want you to go test that this is working. Remember to test it. You can use your AI companion here. Use your app on your phone and pair it. Or you can actually install it on your device by going to build, selecting this. It's going to install, compile your program, and then it's going to, you can actually install it on your phone using a QR code reader like Gantech QR Scanner. Pause the video here. Go test your app, what you currently have so far. See, this is a QR code. I can install it, test my app. This is the code for this button. It currently works. The last part we need to do is the speech recognizer, searching by voice. To continue, when you touch this button, we want to launch the speech recognizer so it listens. After it's done listening, we want to update the search with the exact same thing. So I'm going to collapse this block because we're done with it. When someone clicks on BTN search by voice, which is this block, when someone touches it, what we want to do is launch the speech recognizer. That way it can listen to what the person is saying. Speech recognizer is down here. If you look at the blocks, it has two events. After getting text, that means after they listened, we can do something. Before we get text, we can code that event. It has call speech recognizer, which means launch it, and then it has its two property blocks. Again, what we want to do is when someone touches the button, we want to launch the speech recognizer to get the text. So I'm going to pull this inside of there. That's going to open it up, and it's going to start listening to what the user is saying. After it's done, that's an event, we want to code that. So after it's done, when we come back to speech recognizer, you can see there is the block here after getting text. I'm going to pull this out. 
after it's done, I want to update the web viewer with whatever they said. So speech recognizer grab, if I say monkey, it's going to grab monkey. It stores it here inside of the result. You can't click on result, but you can mouse over it, and that allows you to get whatever I said. So if I say Jamie Gant, result is equal to Jamie Gant. If I say Ronald Reagan Doral, result is equal to Ronald Reagan Doral. So what we're going to do, it's going to be very similar to what we did when we do, when they click on the search button. We need to speak the word. We also need to update this web viewer. This part I'm actually going to leave for you to figure out. You will need results and I'm going to reopen up my button search. I'm going to make this smaller. I'm going to set up the first part of it. It's going to be very similar to BTN search but you're going to figure it out on your own and test it on your own. So if the result is empty I want to say the same area. So I'm going to come back to control I'm going to pull this if statement inside of here. I want to see if what I said was empty. If I didn't say anything, I'm not going to do anything. Go back to is empty. And I'm going to pull in result. The result again is what the person actually said after they spoke. If it's empty, I can do the same thing. I can seal a notification and speak. So I'm going to come down here. I'll show an alert. I'm going to fill that in with text. You can put whatever alert you want to put inside of there. I'm also going to speak. And I'm going to put I did not understand. Please try again. So, if someone pushes on the search by voice and they don't say anything, that means the result is empty. I'm going to send them a notification, and then here I can put the same thing I did not understand. No website. Please try again. Now, again, this is only if they don't say anything when they push the search by voice. Or else, they did say something like Monkey or Jamie or Ronald Reagan. So I need to do else. This part, I'm going to leave for you to figure out. It's going to be very similar to over here. So use this as a comparison. This has been the video on how to complete your Google search app. At the end of this, fill this part out and test your app. Again, to test your app, you're going to go to connect, use the AI companion here, pair it with your phone, or you're going to go to build, generate QR code, and install this app on your device. Test your app, then make sure you add it to your portfolio.